Hello, to here from Macking Domain. We'll be doing a video series on one of our popular products, the KiloView E-Series of encoders. We've done some of the same coverage of this product in the past, but they've been focused primarily on professional applications. Recently, we found that non-professionals are also just as interested in a product like this. So in this series of videos, we are going to explore the device from a more layman's perspective. Here's the device itself, as you can see. It's a sturdy little box that's easy to carry around. We'll take a closer look at the overall build and the connectors in the later part of this video where we look at how to set it up properly. But first, we'll take a general look at the device itself and how it might fit in your live video production projects. Let me paint you a scenario. You may have a camera already, maybe a DSLR or camcorder that has HDMI output and you want to start streaming a simple one camera setup. But then you find that you need to get a USB capture card to convert HDMI to USB only to realize that you also need a software like OBS to help you do simple touch-ups to push your stream to the web. But your laptop or computer may not be powerful enough. If only you had a device that can do all of that while being cheaper than investing in a whole new PC or laptop. I think you can see where I'm going with this, as the E1 or the E2 does exactly that. Another scenario where this device might come in handy is when you need to get a live video feed sent from one location to another in real time and all you have is con internet connection at these two locations, but nothing more. In this case, this device can be used to connect those two locations via internet connection. It does this via a protocol called SRT that requires no additional subscription beyond your standard internet and the device itself. Granted, there will be pr a process in the setup, but don't worry, we will cover this in the future video in detail. So to summarize in technical terms, the E-Series encoders are an affordable and reliable way to encode a live camera source or a multi-cam production output and push them to live streaming websites such as YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, and more. But beyond that, it is also capable of transporting video feeds via several types of protocols such as SRT, RTSP, HLS, and even OnWIF. It can also do recordings in basic H.264 format add basic fixed overlays and text to your stream, and depending on the model, even encode in NDI HX format. If some of these terms are unfamiliar to you, don't worry, we'll be going in more detail in subsequent videos. In this section of the video, we are going to show you some of the most core features of this encoder, which is the RTMP setup. In layman's term, that simply means setting up for a live stream to something like YouTube or Facebook. To set up the unit, there are essentially three steps. Step one, you want to plug in your camera or MCP program output into the encoder's input. The E-Series comes with either SDI, which is the E1 model, or HDMI, which is the E2 model. So make sure to match the model to your device video source connectors. Next, you want to connect the encoder to a network switch or router to enable internet connectivity for the encoder. Finally, you want to find the encoder's web user interface. This can be done by keying in the IP address of the device. There are a few ways to find your device's IP address. The easiest way would be to use a software like Advanced IP Scanner to quickly look up the IP addresses of all your devices on the network. Let me copy the IP address over to my browser. Once you've done that, it should bring you to the encoder's web UI. Log in with the username admin and password admin. If you are unable to find your device, we'll cover some troubleshooting steps in a future video. Once you're done, congratulations! You now have a properly set up unit. One of the main features of this device is its streaming function. And the common one right now would be streaming via RTMP to YouTube, Facebook, and other CDNs. To start, go to the Mainstream tab and create a new RTMP stream by clicking on the plus sign. After that, click on the gear icon of the newly created RTMP stream to go into stream settings. Over here, you can see several parameters you can change. Typically, in order to stream, you'll need to know your stream URL and stream key. I've already scheduled a stream on YouTube, so I'll go into the stream management page to get that specific stream URL and stream key. We'll copy the URL first 
and paste it into the push point box. After that, we'll copy the stream key, add a slash behind the URL inside the push point box and paste the key. Quick hint, most streaming websites URL will start with rtmp colon slash slash. That's one easy way to tell the two apart. After that, we'll adjust the encoding quality settings to suit the streaming website's requirement. Click the two icon beside the mainstream header to access settings. Inside, you'll see several parameters. You can refer to your chosen streaming website's guidelines on recommended encode settings. They usually have them easily available. In my case, I'm going to switch to VBR and change my bitrate to 6 Mbps according to YouTube's guide since I'm running at 1080p 60. For GOP settings, this setting is sometimes referred to as keyframe settings in other hardware or software. Most websites recommend setting a keyframe every 2 seconds. So in GOP terms, simply take your video frame rate and multiply it by 2. So for me, I'll take 60 frames times 2, which means I should set the GOP at 120. If you are running 30p, it would be GOP 60. Running 25 would be GOP 50, so on and so forth. After that, select Yes for Enable Pushing and click Save. Your encoder is now starting to push the stream to the streaming website. We'll head back to YouTube's site and wait for it to appear. When it does, we can go live. These steps will look more or less the same regardless of which platform you're using. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Stay tuned for future videos as we take a look at all the unique features of this device.